sound? Do we have sound? Yeah, we do. Okay. Testing. One, two, three. Here we are. It's Tuesday, and we're talking about work. So let's talk about work. Here we go. Um, all right. So how do you calculate work? Well, let's say work is a scalar is a scalar quantity. What does that mean? Work is a scalar quantity. What? Huh? What's a scalar quantity in physics? Work equals scalar times distance. Oh, 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 it does not, like, um, it's just, scalar doesn't require direction. Yeah, it does, no direction. No direction, right. It's just a magnitude. It's like a number, right? Okay. Work is a scalar quantity. It's the dot product of the force vector times the displacement vector. This is a dot product, not regular multiply. Okay. So, that turns into, by the way, the magnitude of the force vector, regular multiply, the magnitude of the displacement vector, times the cosine of the angle in between. What does that mean? Well, take a look at this. Let's say this is my displacement vector, and this is my force vector. Okay, so I'm pulling something along the ground, and I'm pulling it with a string or something this way. I'm, my hand's up here, the thing's down there, I'm pulling it, right? So let's say this is your displacement vector, this is your force vector, and this is the angle in between. So what is this cosine thing about? Well, the cosine of theta times the magnitude of the force is the projection of the force vector along the displacement vector. What did he say? What did he just say? What did I just say? If you take the cosine of the angle times the magnitude of the force, you get the part of the force that acts horizontally. Have you ever de decomposed a vector into its horizontal and vertical components? Right? If you take the cosine of theta times the, f uh, the force, magnitude of the force, you get the part of the force that works along this path. And using Sokotoa, right. And if you take the sine of theta times that magnitude, you would get the vertical component. But I'm only interested in the component that's working along the displacement, right? Okay, now, that's one. That's the definition of force. Now, be careful with the units. Take a look at this. What if I have a book that weighs five pounds? And I want to lift it straight off the ground, vertically, three feet. So am I work what am I working against? What, what force am I working against? Force due to gravity, the acceleration of gravity, right? So pounds is a unit of force, not a unit of mass. Are you okay with that? Remember that force, a force vector is the mass times the acceleration vector. Didn't Newton say that? Isn't that his second law of motion? The magnitude of the force due to gravity would be the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So what if something weighs 32 pounds? Forget this for one sec. What if something weighs 32 pounds? What's the mass? What if it weighs 32 pounds? What's the mass? Well, what's G, by the way? You know G. That's in meters per second per second. I'm in feet and pounds here. It's 32 feet per second per second. Did you not know that? At sea level, on the earth. By the way, G is not really a constant. It varies with the altitude, how far away from the center of the Earth you are. And it varies with the mass of the planet that you're on. What if you're on Mars? What if you're on the moon? It's different. Okay? But on the Earth, at sea level, G is roughly 32 feet per second per second. So how do you get M alone? Divide 32 into 32, and what do you get? You get 1. 1 what? M is 1 what? If, if you're creature at sea level weighs 32 pounds on the earth. M equals 1 what? Do you know the unit of mass? It's a slug. You ever hear of slugs? See, that's why you got to be careful. The units in the English system are really weird here. Okay? So, if you have the magnitude of the, f of the force due to gravity, the weight, and you have the magnitude of the displacement vector, it's really easy to figure out the work. It's the magnitude of the force vector, 5 pounds, times the magnitude of the displacement vector, 3 feet, times the cosine of the angle in between. What's the angle between the weight vector and the displacement vector? 
Weight is pulling you straight down. Vector is going straight down. The displacement, I'm pushing straight up. They're both vertical, so what's the angle between them? Since they're parallel. Zero. What's the cosine of zero? It's one. So that's why in uh, junior high they started saying, oh yeah, you can do dot for multiply instead of x. Remember that stuff? Then they used to do x in, in like elementary school. Oh, 5x3 is 15, right? Well, because there's two kinds of multiplying. There's a dot product and there's a cross product. In this case, the dot product of the two vectors, right? The dot product of the two vectors turns out to be normal multiplying. That's why they use the same symbol. There is another kind of multiplying. There's a cross product. That's different. We'll get to that. Not to yet, not today. Why? You never realize why they use the little dot for multiply. Now you do. Now, so what is this answer then? 15 watts. What are the units? No, not slugs. That's mass. I want work. Joules. Why? Because it's five pounds by three feet, it's 15 foot pounds. Is that a joule? No, that's in MKS, joules. You know MKS? You know CGS? Do you know anything about the metric system? What's MKS? Meters, kilograms, seconds. What's CGS? Centimeters, grams, seconds. In MKS, the unit of work is a joule, which is a newton meter. This is a foot pound, not a newton meter. It's different. Okay? All right. Again, like I said, in this topic, you've got to be really careful with the units. So, so I'm get talking about that first. Okay, how about, let me change it up a little bit. You ready? Wait, nope. it, joules? It's not joules. It's foot pounds. Joules and foot pounds are not the same. Foot pounds, uh, joules are the same as newton meters. If this was five newtons, and this is three meters. You get three times five is 15 newton meters or joules. But that's different. This is not joules. All right. What if I change the question a little bit? What if I now say the object, the book, it weighs 1.5 kilograms? Is that a correct statement? Can you weigh 1.5 kilograms? Is kilograms a unit of force? No, it's a unit of mass. So what force am I talking about? The magnitude of the force vector on 1.5 kilograms is the mass times the acceleration, right? What's the mass? 1.5. What's the acceleration? It's not 32 anymore because I'm in MKS. What is it? 9.8 meters per second per second, right? So what's the work done? It's the force. This is Newton's now. Okay, if you take kilograms times meters per second per second, that's newtons. I'm just going to write it out. So a little bit less than 15, right? Because it's almost 10. Times what? What's missing? Force times displacement. What is it? Two, right? If you work that out, I think it's 29.4. Now, this is newtons and this is meters. So you can say newton meters or joules here. Okay, so a lot of people like to use uh, the metric system because it's just easier to deal with joules. All right, now, that's great if the force is a constant. What are the force changes over the displacement? As you move this thing along the ground, say you, you exert more force, less force, whatever. You ever hear of Hooke's Law? What's that about? That has to do with spring constants and the, net, the equilibrium length of a spring. And if you've got a big, fat, thick spring, it's got a very big spring constant. It's very hard to compress. If you've got a very little skinny th little spring, like in a big pen or a click pen, right? The, the spring constant is very small because you can compress it really easy, right? So Hooke said the magnitude of the force due to a spring is directly proportional to the comp amount of compression. Let's call that X. How much you compress the spring or expand the spring from its natural length. Okay? So let's say I take a spring whose natural length is one foot. And I compress it to three quarters of a foot. How much work is done? Well, see, the, the force is variable. As X increases, the force increases. 
as x, the amount of compression, how, f how much you've compressed it, increases, it works harder and harder against you. So you have to make a Riemann statement here. You have to figure out the work over a small amount of displacement and, and another small amount, another small amount, and add it all up. That sounds like an integral, doesn't it? That's where the calculus comes in. All right, let's say this spring has a spring constant of 16 pounds per, per foot. Does that make sense? How's your dimensional analysis?